Hi, and welcome to Book Nook. I'm Lynn Kessler with Read Aloud West Virginia. We're glad you've joined us today to read some stories. Today, Betty King with the West Virginia Symphony Orchestra has joined me. Hi, Betty. Hi, Lynn. It's great to be here. And you are the Vice President for Education and Operations with yes. the Symphony. Yes. Very proud to serve in that capacity. This is my ninth season with the Symphony. That is wonderful. Um, well, we are excited to hear about some of the things you guys have going on at the symphony. Um, we recently learned that you have a series that is specifically for children. Um, those are performed during the daytime and school groups can um, schedule to attend those. Homeschool and school groups can schedule to attend those. Tell us a little bit about Absolutely. Private schools, parochial schools, home schools, we, we invite everyone. This is our Young People's Concert Series. We do a total of 16 concerts every year uh, in clumps of three. And in March, on March 15th and 16th at the Clay Center, we will be performing Stories and Legends. Okay. Uh, it's a program that's primarily for grades um, pre-kindergarten through fifth, although listeners of any age could come join us and the cost is very low it's only four dollars per student so uh -huh. um, it's the best deal in town you come to the clay center and you'll hear great classics that day like the sorcerer's apprentice and in the hall of the mountain king and a composition by aaron copeland who's an american composer called john henry mm -hmm. and the john henry story of course originated in uh, summers county and so it's got a right. great west virginia co connection we love that <laughs> you can tie that to, to something they can relate to and, and, and picture it a little bit. Um, now, does that also include some Star Wars music, did I it say? It does, it yes. does. Uh, we do the uh, main theme from Star Wars uh -huh. and a few things from, uh, I guess it's kind of from the overture, but you'll hear a couple of different themes in there, and that mm -hmm. is usually the last thing we play in the concert, and the crowd always goes wild. Oh, yes, wild, so. yes. I, I have a eight and six-year-old daughters, and they've, they've found Star Wars recently, so <laughs> I can imagine they, they would be very excited. I imagine they're not alone in that. So. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> okay, so you said this series is best for pre-K to fifth grade? Pre-K to fifth grade or anyone, um, we don't limit it. So if you've got middle school kids that maybe have not had an encounter with a symphony orchestra before, mm -hmm. it's, a great, uh, it's a great introductory point, and some of the music will sound familiar because kids have heard these on cartoon, well, the old cartoons anyway, right. on, on cartoons and commercials, and so it's all very accessible music. Uh, you may or may not know that there are stories that go along with, with all yeah. of those pieces, so that's what we try and bring out in that particular concert. Yeah. That's great, and, and of course, read aloud, we love the idea of intertwining stories and music, and, and hopefully the kids will go home and, and look up the stories that go along with the music Absolutely, that you're exposing them to, so that's a great thing. Um, do you do this just in Charleston or? Our spring concert, uh, the Stories and Legends, we'll do in Charleston. We'll also do it in Parkersburg, but a different okay. group kind of controls the, um, the inventory up there. I can put folks in touch with that are in the Parkersburg area that might want to go. Okay. I can put them in touch. We'll be there on March 17th. Okay. And throughout the year, uh, it's usually our fall series. We also perform that in Morgantown, so it's much easier for the folks in the northern part of the state to come hear us in November. Great. Uh, we'll be doing a piece called Song of the Wolf, which is based on the Three Little Pigs next November, uh, the week before Thanksgiving. Okay, that's great. So people all across the state can find you guys when you're in the various locations and, and hear some, some wonderful music by West Virginia musicians. Mm -hmm. uh, Primarily, yes, yes. Um, that's that's wonderful. Um, do you have a website where people can find more information about we this? We do. Uh, we have the, the wvsymphony.org website, which is our, our main parent site. Uh, okay. We have a lot of programs coming up in the month of March and April and early May that people might want to check out, including uh, the Blue Planet based mm -hmm. on the BBC series. We'll be doing that as a Saturday evening concert on March 19th. Okay. And tickets start at $10. And so we're encouraging people, uh, especially families, to attend that concert. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of students, children under the age of 10 who have seen the picture of the whales that comes as part of the, the promo for that uh -huh. and they, they go, wait, I know that, that's on PBS and so they, uh, yes. they identify with that. So we're hoping to bring a lot of folks out. But our secondary website is just for kids and it's WVSO kids, 
www.ncpbs.org. And we have a list of the programs, including our stories and legends, on there. We also have an interactive section where you can go and look at the instruments of the orchestra. And each instrument pops up, and it will even rotate. And you can see the different parts of an instrument if you're interested oh. in that. See the different sections and hear audio clips of what those instruments sound like. Uh, there's okay. a few games on there and some of our young people's programs. The full, um, the full program is actually on there and they can hear that as well. Oh, okay. That's a wonderful service to provide to help kids get familiar with, with instruments and music and good things. We love it. We love it. <laughs> now, if um, a group or individuals want to attend the daytime series, mm -hmm. how would they go about it? The best number to call is the Clay Center uh, Group Reservationist, and that's 304-561-3562. And they'll speak with Dylan Turner, who will get you set up with a reservation for the concert. We have two concerts each day, so we've got a lot of capacity and would love to invite folks to come join us. And do you sell individual tickets for those as well? And even yes. walk-ups are welcome. Okay. Um, how about the Blue Planet and the other... Um, series that you've talked about? Um, the Clay Center is our ticketing box office currently, and so if you want a Blue Planet tickets, that would be 304-561-3570, or you can go to our website, wvsymphony.org, and we'll link you to, uh, to tickets. Our concerts have been selling out lately, so I would suggest you get tickets early. Yes. Yes, I was a little late on the... Uh, oh, on John uh, Williams? <laughs> mm -hmm. On the John Williams, yes. I, I waited, waited too long and we, we missed out on that one. So, so we may have to check out the stories and legends. <laughs> so you, you clearly have a love of music and, and I get the feeling stories too. Tell me a little bit about, has reading played a role in leading you to your current occupation or how have reading and music kind of intertwined in your life? Probably, I, I was reading long before I was playing music, and I love the Miss Pickerel books, and the Encyclopedia Brown does everything. I just ate those books up, and constantly my parents were taking us to uh, the public library, either in South Charleston or at Kanawha County, and we were just bringing home stacks and stacks of books, and that's what we did, is we read, read and we played outside. We didn't have too many video games. That was yeah. almost before Pong. So, <laughs> so our, the way we explored, uh, the way we adventured, the way we went out to see new lands was through reading mm -hmm. very much. Do you remember reading a lot of books about music or was that? Not necessarily. I find I read more about music now mm -hmm. and a lot of what I read has to do with um, a lot of the brain research that, that is being done right now with musicians where they're hooking up musicians' brains, um, jazz musicians and sting, and they'll hook their brains up with all the electrodes and they'll have them improvise and they watch the synapses in the brain go oh, crazy. Wow. And, and so I, I love that reading can help me understand about music and creativity. Mm -hmm. And I love to read John Clancy and Tom, or Tom Clancy and, um, say John Grisham and, uh -huh. uh, and and go to lots of places yeah. and, and get to travel that way when sometimes it's not always possible with my job to really travel. Sure, yeah, and, and you know, reading does that for adults as well as children. They've um, done studies recently that, that show that in a child's brain when a, when a loved one reads aloud to them that it activates pleasure centers and and also language centers the early early learning and, and that kind of thing so it's interesting how um, music and reading and all of these things light up those areas in well, our you brain. Captivate and the imagination, captivate the mind, mm -hmm. and that's without having, sometimes without having pictures. Mm -hmm. One of my best uh, memories of, of doing read aloud in a classroom was at Ruffner Elementary and I was reading one of my favorite favorite books for fourth graders and it's it's called Toad Rage and I had to change my voice like I have to change the notes on an instrument to to really create the sense of anticipation with what was going to happen in the book mm -hmm. and the kids would often say oh don't go can't we have don't we have time for one more chapter oh. and and that kind of it's not a performance but that kind of engagement and getting mm -hmm. getting students to be excited about a story or something that they can imagine the pictures in their mind is, is mm -hmm. really, really satisfying. Yeah, and I think that is another thing the two music and reading have in common is just the, the stimulation of the imagination and the, the musical kind of sound that you can, you can get out of, out of a book um, and out of language. Um, it's an interesting connection. So, 
So we, we, we share your love of the <laughs> books and music, and, and we appreciate you joining us today to talk about it. And you are also going to read us some books today. Absolutely. absolutely. Which, which one are we going to start with? I think we're going to start with A Violin for Elva. Okay. So we are going to read a book about music? That's absolutely. Sounds perfect. All right. Well, we'll let you get started reading. Thank, Thank you. you. The first book I've chosen to read is entitled A Violin for Elva by Mary Lynn Ray with illustrations by Tricia Tusa. Above the ruffle of talk and the rustle of dresses, Elva heard music. Later, she didn't say she had been watching through a hedge. All she told her parents was, I want a violin. She asked them both. She asked with please, but they hadn't heard what Elva heard, and they said no. So she pretended. When she should have been brushing her teeth, Elva was rehearsing for recitals. When she could have been learning subtraction or should have been going to sleep, she was playing music only she could hear. Summer, autumn, winter, spring, Elva played, and Elva grew. She outgrew her sleeves, outgrew her shoes. She grew until she was a grown-up and outgrew her violin. Now she had a briefcase and a job. She had appointments and important meetings. But if she saw a page tremulous with music, she remembered what she had once wanted. I'm too busy, Elva said, though she began to borrow records from the library downtown. At home, she listened to them. And then she felt she had picked up her violin. Sometimes she was the whole string section of the Philharmonic, all those elbow, elbows going up and down. Other times, she played alone. But the music stopped when the record stopped, and silence filled the room. Elva had a dog for conversation, but conversation with her dog couldn't cover up the quiet. She kept chocolates for refreshment, but chocolates couldn't fill the empty feeling. Well, I have things to do, said Elva, and she did them. So summer, autumn, winter, spring, the years went by. Elva had many satisfactions and achievements. Only one was missing. I'm too old now, she told her dog. But more and more she kept imagining what might have been. Until one day she took a breath and took her purse and bought a shiny, fragile, varnished violin. At home, Elva studied how to hold it. Then she lifted it against her shoulder and clamped it with her chin. She pushed the bow across the string. Squeak! She cried again. She tried again. Squeak! So Elva tried something else. She drew the bow back toward her, and the string sang. A single note was not exactly music, but it gave her expectations. Feeling bold, she tried a different string. The bow bucked. The dog slid under the sofa, but Elva played her one note again and was encouraged. I will improve, she said, but she didn't. It wasn't easy holding the bow correctly, landing on the right notes, figuring out flats and sharps. I will improve, she said, but still she didn't. So Elva sadly snapped the case and put away her violin. Then one day she heard that Madame Josephina was accepting beginner students. And again she took a breath and took her purse and bought a course of lessons. Every Tuesday, every Thursday, Elva came to Madame Josephina. On the days in between, she practiced. Then there was a recital. All the students had to perform on stage. Everyone was nervous, especially Elva. But she drew the bow against the strings, and in that moment, something happened. Elva was making music. She came right home, and lifting her violin, she played for her dog. Then she played again for herself, and again, and again, 
until at last Elva kissed her bow and went to bed, imagining all the tomorrows and all the music there was to make. The second book I've selected is called The Orchestra Pit by Joanna Wright. Our main character here is a snake. I have a feeling I'm in the wrong pit. The Orchestra Pit. It's time to do a bit of exploring. That trumpet is loud. The tuba is quite roomy. The trombone is almost as long as I am. Bonjour, French horn. Oh no, something must have startled them. Here are the wind instruments. The flute, the clarinet, the bassoon, and the piccolo. That oboe is rather charming. The string section seems friendlier. The violin, the viola, the cello, and I'm quite attached to the bass. Uh-oh, maybe a little bit too attached. It's time to hide. Is that an elephant I hear? A hippo? A bird? The strings remind me of monkeys. The percussion sounds like a gorilla. It's about to begin. Quiet. Loud. And with the orchestra playing, what a racket. It's time to head home. Out of the wrong pit. And into the right one. That was the orchestra pit by Joanna Wright. The next book I'd like to read is called Pages of Music by Tommy DePaulo. The pictures are by Tommy DePaulo and the book is by Tony Johnston. Long ago, a painter and her son, Paulo, visited the island of Sardinia. The mother had heard how beautiful it was in the spring and she wanted to paint it then. It was an island of mountains, leaning over bays, hills sprinkled with wildflowers and sheep, and everywhere the sound of shepherd's pipes. Beautiful as it was, it was also a poor island. The people were poor because the land was poor. They scratched it with sticks and dug it with hoes and turned it over with the help of oxen. Still, they were able to grow only enough grain and olives to live from day to day. The mother bought olives and cheese in a village and they went into the hills where she could paint and Paulo could play. One day, a shepherd saw her painting his flock. He could tell from the picture that she loved the island. You must be tired from painting so many sheep, he said. Come, eat something with me. We have olives, said the mother. We have cheese, said Paulo. But you need more, the shepherd said. You need Fogla de Musica, pages of music. Paulo loved music. At home, he practiced his music very hard, but he could not eat it. What is that? he asked excitedly. You will see. They went to the shepherd's hut, sat on wooden stools, and shared his foglia de music, which was a thin, hard bread. When they had finished, the mother offered to pay the shepherd, but he just smiled, took up his pipe, and filled the air with sweet notes. Paulo began to dance and sing with such joy that the shepherd leaped up and danced too. The mother sailed her hat into the wind and laughed. 
So it was throughout Sardinia, Paolo and his mother wandered the hills. She painted the sheep, the shepherds, and the beautiful land. Wherever they went, shepherds shared what little they had with them, their foglia de musica, and Paolo listened to the music of their pipes, and he loved it. At last, they went home. As they traveled to the mainland, Paolo looked to the island far away. One day I will go back there, he said. Years passed and Paolo grew up. He studied music, he played music, he wrote compositions, and he became a famous composer. People heard his music in the concert halls of Europe. He writes like an angel, they said, and he did. Paolo wrote for organs, for harps, for whole orchestras. But in his heart, he still heard shepherd's pipes. To him, they made the most beautiful sound of all. He wanted to write music for them, so he did. He worked and worked on the music. As he worked, he remembered the shepherds who had shared their bread with him and his mother. He remembered what he had said, one day I will go back there. Then he had a wonderful idea, and he smiled. One Christmas morning, something incredible happened in the village of Sardinia. It was so early, the sun had not yet risen. The villagers heard something, creaking. Birds do not creak, they said, but what else is awake at this hour but the birds? They poked their heads out of windows and doors. The creaking got louder. Cosa questo, they asked. What is this? Far away, a procession of wagons was crawling over the hills. As it got closer, the villagers saw that the wagons were full of men and women, grandly dressed in black and white. Cosa questo, they asked. The wagon stopped in front of the church. A man jumped down and began directing things. He moved so quickly that his hair bounced and his bow tie jiggled. He seemed to be everywhere at once. It was Paulo. Quick, 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 he said. Everybody out. Careful with the instruments. That's it. Very fine. Yes, please. Gently, gently, gently. Like so many eggs, the percussions and woodwinds and strings were set down on the street, then carried inside the church. Gently, gently, gently. And before anyone could say Santo Piccolo, an entire symphony orchestra was settled comfortably there. Then Paolo told everyone, when the shepherds come, the music will begin. The musicians spent the entire day laughing, eating, and sharing stories with the people while they waited for the shepherds to come to church, as they would, for it was Christmas. At last, the shepherds came down from the hills. As they neared the church, they heard something creaking. Crickets do not creak, they said. But what else could this be at, that hour, at this hour but crickets? They poked their heads through the church doors. Cose questo, they asked. It was Paolo's orchestra getting settled. I am Paolo, Paolo said. I am grown up. Do you remember? And they did. Once you shared your foglia de musica with me, he told them. Now I will share mine with you. Flutes begin to play a simple shepherd's song. Violins joined in, and the organ, and horns, until at last the whole orchestra was playing. It was a song of a night long ago, a blazing star, and shepherds come to meet a child. As the notes swelled up, a joyful feeling filled the church, for everyone felt the beauty of the song and the warmth of Christmas, sharing Paolo's Foglia de Musica. That was Tony Johnston's Pages of Music with illustrations by Tommy DePaolo. The next book doesn't really have a name. It's by Amy Krauss Rosenthal, and the picture you see is the title of our book. Exclamation mark. He stood out from the very beginning. He stood out here. He stood out there.
It seemed like the only time he didn't stand out was when he was asleep. He tried everything to be more like them. But he just wasn't like everyone else, period. He was confused, flummoxed, and deflated. He even thought about running away. Then one day, Hello? Who are you? What grade are you in? What's your favorite color? Do you like frogs? What's your favorite ice cream? When's your birthday? Know any good jokes? Do you want to race to the corner? Is there an echo in here? Is there an echo in here? What's your favorite movie? Do you know what makes gravity? Why do you look so surprised? Am I boring you? Do you think a snail could go around the world? So what do you want me to do? Who's taller, you or me? What do you want to be when you grow up? Stop! He didn't know he had it in him. How'd you do that? Can you do it again? He wasn't sure, so he started small. Hi. That felt right, so he tried something bigger. Howdy. As he pushed himself a bit more, wow. He discovered a world of endless possibilities. Yippee, this is fun, way to go. Bravo! It was like he broke free from a life sentence. You're it! Yes! Home run! Congratulations! Cool! Happy birthday! Yum! Go! Encore! Look out! That's great! Thanks! Wake up! Boo! He couldn't wait to show everyone. Hey guys, it's me! Look what I can do! Of course, there was much exclaiming. Isn't he something? There was never any question in our minds. So, with his head held high, he went off to make his mark. The end. That was exclamation mark by Amy Krauss Rosenthal and Tom Lichtenheld. And finally, I think we're about out of time, but a book I'd like to recommend is called Toad Heaven by Morris Gleitzman. And it's a great chapter book for those of you who are just about in fourth grade and really like to use your imagination and want to hear more about some toads who are trying not to be roadkill. Uh, like I say, it's a great chapter book that I've used in Read Aloud um, at Ruffner Elementary a few years ago. And so uh, all of these books are available at the Kanawha County Public Library and I hope to return them right after the show today so that you can go check them out and experience them on your own. Let's read just a little bit from Toad Heaven. Limpy stuck his head out of the grass and peered up and down the highway. He felt his crooked leg twitching and his warts tingling like they always did when he was excited. And scared. All clear. No headlights speeding out of the darkness. No trucks, cars, buses, or caravans thundering along the highway. 